Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 12. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to start working on some tile art to populate the rooms and tiles we were working on last time. Let's remind ourselves what we did in the last episode. Okay, so if we run our game we can see that we can now draw some tiles. Our tiles are currently just um, numbers and colors, and we're going to fix that in this episode. But the important things to note are, number one, uh, we lay out our tiles using a tile map class, and we have this giant string here, which represents where tiles should be drawn on the screen. And if we look at the draw function of this, we can see that if a character, um, or for each character in the string, we draw a different tile, or we draw nothing. So if I just add a line of um, tiles we are unfamiliar with here, uh, Z, and run our game, we can see that it just draws nothing. So that's quite nice. If we make a mistake, it just won't draw a tile. Cool. So that's how our tiles are laid out. Our tiles are actually drawn by our tilesheet class, and what our tilesheet does is it takes our actual texture of tiles. Here we go, we're using 8x8 eight eight tiles. It takes our image or our texture and it chops it up into 8x8 eight eight slices. That's the tile size argument here, and it stores them in this quads table. And then in our draw tile function, we just Give the or we give the draw tile function the index of the tile um, of a tile row and tile column as well as the x and y position, and that's the way of choosing which tile we would like to draw. So if we want to draw, uh, let's take a look. If we want to draw two, for instance, we say we want to draw the second column in the first row, or sorry, the second tile in the first row. Uh, getting, I'll slow down. Getting confused with the words. Second tile in the first row. There we go. So that should be enough. Ah, yes, rooms as well. Let's quickly cover rooms before we move on to the artwork. So last episode, we swapped the drawing function in our room to actually draw a tile map. And that tile map is currently just created when we create the room. OK, let's think about doing some drawing. So the program I'm going to use for uh, the artwork in this series is GIMP. It stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's a free and open source image editor, as you can see from the big letters on the screen. Um, and it's a, it's a great program. It is sometimes a little hard to use. It doesn't maybe have the best user experience in the world, but it is free, open source, and very, very powerful once you get to learn how it works. Fortunately for us, in order to do pixel art, you only really need um, two or three of the tools available. So let's switch to, oop, it's not open, let's open up GIMP and take a look. Okay, so like everything else in the series, we're going to start off by keeping our tiles simple and we'll come back and improve them later on when we need to. But to start with, we're just going to draw some walls, pardon me, some walls and some floors. Okay, so let's just tidy up the desktop slightly. Nice clean desktop, there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in and choose the pencil tool. You can either click on it or you can just hit N on your keyboard, which is much faster. So I recommend you learn some of the keyboard shortcuts. I'll call them out as we go. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to change the brush we're using for our pencil to the pixel brush, which is normally the one, the second one along at the top here. And what this does is it gives you a nice one pixel by one pixel brush, which is ideal for the work we want to do. Let's create a new image to hold our tiles. So let's make it 32 by 32. If we're doing 8 by 8 tiles, this will give us enough for 4 by 4 tiles in our image. So let's zoom in. You can do this either using your trackpad, you can make kind of a pinching motion, or you can hit Z or choose the zoom tool up here and give it a couple of clicks. There we go. 
hit N to switch back to our pencil. And oh, that's the other thing we need to do. Let's make sure we switch the size of the pencil to one pixel. There we do. There, bleh, sorry. There we go. There we go. It's quite late here, and my speech is starting to run away with me. Oh well, we'll get to the end. Don't worry. Okay, now let's go into view. Let's choose show grid. And just in case your grid isn't set up right, you can go into image and choose configure grid and make sure for this episode, at least it's eight by eight pixels. So that shows us our four by four tiles and it just helps us keep everything laid out neatly. Okay, so I said we were going to do some walls and some floors and I want to start off with sort of a dungeon theme, your classic like level one dungeon. So in order to do that, I'm going to first of all choose a base color and I might do a slightly longer episode or sidebar on colors and color palettes later on. Um, but for now, let's just choose a nice blue color. Uh, blue is a nice sort of coal or if I shift it towards the colder blues here, that feels nice for, for sort of a cold, um, damp dungeon. And I'm going to try to, I'm keeping my eye on two numbers here, or two of the sliders here, the saturation and the value, because I don't want anything that is too saturated or has too high a value, because what that will do is it will make the color too bright, too powerful, and it will overpower our, our graphics in the front of our screen, or our actual player graphics. So we're going to choose something that's quite muted for our background. Let's start off with this color for... And this will be the base color for our walls. And I'm actually going to use our first tile as a bit of a color palette to make it easy to pick up colors later. So now let's go into our color picker again. Uh, you do this, by the way, just by clicking on the, uh, on the foreground or background color. And I'm actually going to lower the value by, let's say 20. So let's go to 19. And this will give me a darker color which I can use for things like outlines and uh, some shading and shadows. Okay, let's go back up to where we were originally and now let's punch it by, let's just keep it simple. Um, again, we can come back and tweak our colors later. Let's punch it by another 20 to give us a lighter tone if we need to use that later. And while we are in this tone, I'm also going to lower our saturation to give us a gray color. And this is what we'll use for our floor. Gray is quite a useful color because you can also use it to bridge into other colors and tones because it's so sort of neutral, but more on that perhaps in later episodes. For now, we can do quite a lot with just these three or four colors I've chosen here. Okay, let's start by creating a basic wall and uh, keeping it simple. Our first wall is going to look like, oops, sorry, that's the wrong tone. So hit O to choose the uh, color picker and pick up the middle sort of base tone here. And our first tile is just going to be an eight by eight blue, blue gray wall tile. There we go. But to, um, so just using solid colors, not very interesting. So we need to add the illusion of some depth and some shadow in here to make it feel a bit more like a dungeon and less like a, a paint color palette or a, you know, there's like a Dulux color palette things. So in order to do that, we are going to make another wall tile. And this is going to be for the bottom of our walls. And what we're going to do, just fill this in. I'm going to pick up our dark tone here and I'm going to use a technique called divering. And this really means just using a checkerboard pattern um, to create the illusion of shadow or shading. So we're just going to do the bottom two, bottom two rows of pixels and maybe some sort of random pixels, semi-random pixels as well, slightly further up. Uh, let's go here and here. Okay, and finally, for this first round of tiles, let's also do the top of our wall. So in the same way, oops, I find on my laptop the color picker can uh, sometimes be a bit, uh, or sometimes just not pick up the color, probably because my trackpad is a bit dodgy, so apologies if you can hear me hammering on the trackpad a couple of hundred times. Okay. 
Now let's get um, our dark tone and again apply some dithering to the top of our wall. Okay, that feels kind of good. So now let's go into the file menu and we're just going to choose export. So you can save it if you want, but if you save it, it will save it as a XCF a GIMP file, which we won't be able to use in our game, but it will preserve things like the layers and slightly more image information. But for our purposes, we're just going to export it as a PNG. So PNG should be the default format, but if not, you can come up here and just add .png to the end. And let's uh, just stick this in, where are we? Let's code an indie game, episode 12, assets, sprites, tiles, and let's call this dungeon.png. And just hit export. It'll ask you a couple of options for how you want to encode the PNG. I'm just going to leave it at the default settings for this episode. Okay, now we have our tiles. Let's check for they load into our game. So switch back to the code. And inside of room.lua, let's change our numbers tiles to or our tile image to be dungeon. And let's just run the game. Okay, so it works success we can load in our um, load in our tile sheet we're drawing the wrong tiles at the moment but that's what we're going to fix next so in our tile map let's come down and let's add in some walls so I'm going to keep using X for the wall so let's just fill out a couple of these rows with solid wall tiles There we go. And now let's also add in our bottom and top tiles as well so we can see how they look. So I like to use pic um, pictures, no, what, what am I looking for? Characters. I like to use characters which are vaguely representative of what we're trying to draw. So I'm just going to use equals for the bottom of our wall because it kind of looks like the bottom of a wall. And um, I'm going to use uh, the caret up arrow symbol for uh, the top of the wall because it points up. There's no science to this, no science at all. So in our uh, draw function we now just want to make sure that if we get an X tile, let's take a look at our tiles, if we get an X character we want to draw the first tile in our sheet. So the first tile is actually the color palette so we want the second tile which will be 2-1 to one. Okay, we are going to ignore our dot for now because we don't have a floor yet, but if we get the up sort of uh, carrot symbol here, then we want to draw the top of our wall and that will be 4-1, the fourth tile in the first uh, row. And then Let's also draw the bottom of our wall. So that's if the character in our tile map is an equals, we want to draw the, this must be the third tile. Let's see how that looks. Okay. So you can see that the dithering pattern, actually I'm going to get rid of the other extra tiles here because it's, uh, sort of distracting from what I'm trying to show. So let's just very quickly replace this with dots. And then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 1, 2, And then we can just get rid of the rest of the lines here. There we go, much better. 
So you can see how the divering sort of blends, helps to blend our wall in and give it the illusion of, a, of shadow and depth. Um, I would probably go back and edit these eventually because I, I kind of feel that some of our textures are a bit too repetitive and a good trick when you're creating tiles is to try and hide the joins. Um, and these feel a bit, just because we've got this sort of dot in the middle that feels a bit repetitive at the moment. You can actually see the one on the bottom doesn't feel as repetitive just because it's not as symmetrical. So that's a good aim is to, uh, is to make, not make things too symmetrical because uh, you can just tell where the tiles join up too easily. But anyway, moving on for now, let's add in some floor. So let's choose our gray color and let's start off with just some plain floor. Let's uh, just export this and let's remember this tile is the first tile in the second row. So now we can just come up here and say if our character equals dot then tile sheet oops, draw tile u x y and we want the first tile in the second row okay here's how it looks with the floor added and now I'm seeing it with the floor, I want to go in and add a bit more shading onto the bottom of the base of our wall. Um, just because it's starting, we're getting a bit of a, a strange zigzag effect here. So let's fix that very quickly. Again, pick up. Oops. There we go. Uh, export again, run our game. There we go, we can see it blends in slightly, uh, just a bit more nicely there with the rest of our tiles. Right, so our floor is looking pretty boring at the moment, so let's add in another tile to do a couple of floor decorations. And let's pick the same color as our wall and let's just add in some, uh, maybe let's add in a, a rock. So we'll use our dark color for a bit of shadow. Oops. There we go. And again, let's export this tile. And we can say, let's just use commas for this. So we're just going to throw in a few of these to break up the way our floor looks. Okay, and this is going to be position two, two. Okay, so now we've got a bit more, yeah, it's just a bit more interesting. We've got some stuff going on on the floor. Our wall is blended in. Finally, let's add in a couple more tiles to extend our wall um, and yeah, make it a bit more, again, it's still a bit boring. It's a bit flat at the moment. So what we're going to do is, Let's make a tile, which is, we're going to take a 45 degree line through the tile and we're going to shade above that line with our wall color and below that line with our floor color. And what this is going to be is this is going to be a tile which is showing a wall which actually comes towards the screen. And the way we're going to do that, we're using a projection 
where everything is sort of at 45 degrees and I'll go into that more I think next time and we'll talk a bit about projections but for now um, this will make sense once you see it on the screen so what we have to do because this is at the bottom of our wall is just make sure that our shading is still in effect so remembering that everything is now drawn at 45 degrees let's just add in some shading here okay let's make use of this tile so let's export to dungeon uh, yes I do want to replace export and now let's add in our sloped tile about halfway along and let's just use S because it's sloped so this is the bottom of our wall let's start sloping um, here And let's fill oops, this in with our wall now. Feels like maybe it should uh, be more, be more like this, or I suppose we'll find out. The easiest way of testing these things is to run the game. So let's make sure we're drawing our sloped tile. So this is in the second row, and I believe it's the last tile. Okay. Yep, we can fix that. We've got a bit of a problem with the slope there. So put that back. There we go. So we need to fix our shading slightly because it's a little too, it doesn't quite match up with our shading on this tile here. The other thing we need to do, of course, is make sure we're using our base tile down here as well. Okay, cool. And um, there's a few more tweaks we can make just to finish off with this. Three tiles here. Let's make sure this lines up. Yep. Okay, and now we should add a bit more shading and maybe an edge and then I think that will do for this episode and then this should suddenly all make sense, at least this little uh, bit we're doing here. Right, so because that wall is projecting towards us, we're going to shade in the side which if we just assume all of the lighting in our game kind of comes from the top right we're going to shade in any walls or anything which is on the left kind of like we've done with our little rock down here we've added just a tiny bit of shadow down at the edge there so let's create another wall tile and I'm actually going to cheat with the shading here so a lot of pro pixel artists or certainly people who are better than me have an entire color palette um, which they use but for this kind of shading I, lost, I cheat I just create a new layer and I'm just going to call this shade. Um, I am going to set the blend mode here to multiply and the opacity to about uh, say 30. Then inside of this layer I'm just going to choose, I'm going to make sure actually, so hit O to bring up the color picker tool, choose sample merged and I'm going to choose my darkest color and then I'm going to paint over anything I want to be shaded and what the multiply effect combined with that lower opacity will do is just darken everything um, going over the lines there we go it will darken everything we paint over 
and this is just quite useful for uh, either applying sort of a uniform shading to everything or just doing things a bit more quickly. So let's um, paint over everything which is sloping um, or which is a left hand wall. And while I'm here I might switch back to this layer and take the opportunity to fix up uh, some of the shading on this tile. So another useful trick with GIMP is you can turn off your shading by hitting the I button next to the layer. Just make sure you've selected the background layer when you go back to drawing. Okay, so I think our problem with this shading was it was just a bit too heavy. So let's just take it back slightly. There we go. Make sure our shading is visible again. Okay, let's export this and let's use our shaded tile as well. So let's use capital X for shaded walls. Okay, let's just draw that wall as well. Three, two. Okay, and now as soon as we add the shading, you can see that it looks a lot more 3D or at least fake 3D. Um, our wall actually looks like it is uh, reaching forward and we've got a bit of an edge going on there as well. Cool, I'm going to wrap up here for now. Um, hopefully I've shown you a couple of things that can get you started with some pixel art. Um, this is by no means the best pixel art in the world, but you know, again, we are building things up slowly. The idea is to do just enough to get to the next stage. And if we go back and view our game a couple of weeks ago and view it now, it's kind of nice to see the, the progress that we've made. As always, the code for this and the graphics will be available on GitHub, but do have a go and try and draw your own stuff, practice your own techniques, and there's a whole load of really wonderful pixel art tutorials out there which you can follow, read up on, and give your own style a go. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if this has been useful, and also remember, please ask questions. I love answering them for you. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.